In terms of homeostasis, uh, that's a concept of the, the animal's uh, uh, biology, the physiology of the animal able to regulate the uh, uh, required amount of, of, of trace elements, at least in this topic here that we're, we're discussing being trace elements. And so some of the homeostatic mechanisms uh, are very sensitive, particularly for those trace elements that could be toxic, such as selenium and copper. And so the animal has a, a, a very efficient mechanism, uh, in the case of copper, for excreting copper uh, through the, generally through the bile when uh, uh, concentrations, intake concentrations are high. But in the other end of the spectrum, when intakes are quite low, if they're on a very marginal copper diet, then the efficiency of copper absorption increases dramatically. And so that's just one way that the animal's able to balance uh, its homeostasis. When you think about uh, trace elements that are much lesser toxic, like zinc and manganese, those animals are able to consume much higher levels of these elements without uh, running into toxicity issues. And so the sensitivity in these homeostatic mechanisms are probably uh, not as great. Now that doesn't mean that there can't be an interaction. So for example, copper and zinc can interact with each other for absorption. Both of them are uh, uh, tied to methionine, or I'm sorry, metallothionine. Uh, in their absorption and transport uh, mechanisms. And, and metallothionine is much more sensitive to, uh, to copper than it is zinc. And so in instances where people might be supplementing too much copper, they could be running into or eliciting uh, zinc deficiency issues.